Hello guys, this is the second video for uh, kinetic chemistry where we're going to continue with rate's law, order of reaction and rate constants. So what we have learned so far, we know that concentration is directly proportional to the rate of reaction. So therefore rate is directly proportional to the constants. So deriving this proportionality, we shall have rate is equal to a constant time concentration. So such expression is also not known as rate equations, also known as rate's law, where it is a way to express the relationship of the rate of reactions to the rate constant and the concentration reaction raised to some power. Rate constant K, in the other hand, is the proportionally constant of a given chemical reactions. So supposedly if a chemical reaction takes place as shown in the equations before, you have AA plus BB gives CC plus DD, so the rate equation for the reactions can be expressed as rate is equal to K, concentration of A power of X, concentration of B power of Y, where K here is the rate constant, A and B here is the concentration of A and B, X and Y is what we call as the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of A and B. So let's have a look based on the rate equations that we discussed just now. So in here, you can see that only the reactions con uh, concentration of the reactants is taken into consideration as speed of the reaction largely depends on the amount of concentration for the reactant used in the process. So generally, greater the amount of reactant used, greater the rate of reactions. Rate constant K is the proportionally constant of a reaction in which the value remains constant under constant temperature, regardless the changes of the temperature, uh, regardless the changes of the concentration of the reactions. However, rate constant changes with the temperature of reactions. We also know that order of reaction X and Y is the power to which the concentration is raised in the rate equation. However, in this case, the raw order of reaction has no relationship with the stoichiometric coefficients of the chemical reactions. Therefore, X is not equal to A. A here just now, as we see, is the, is the stoichiometric coefficient for the A, while B here is stoichiometric coefficient for B. So order of reaction X and Y has no relationship with it. So order of reaction can only be determined from the series of experiments carried out under different concentration, which we shall discuss later on how to determine. The order of overall order of reaction can be calculated by summing the order of reaction for each reactants involved in this case. So, overall order of reaction is X plus Y. Once the overall order is, react is known, the rate constant can be calculated accordingly by substituting the concentration and the order of reactions toward the rate of each experiment. So, you know the rate constant depends largely on the overall order of reactions. So, for zero order, rate constant unit is small per decimeter cube per second. In first order, rate constant is second minus one. In second order, rate constant is more minus one dm cube s minus one, and so on. So in this case, in these uh, sections, we are going to study three order of reaction, namely first order, second order, and also zero order of reactions. So let's have a look at what is actually a first order of reactions. Now, first order of reaction is a reaction whose rate depends on the reactance of concentration raised to the first power. So supposedly in the chemical reaction when A is give products, so therefore for this reaction, rate of reaction can be expressed as rate is equal to negative dA dt, or based on the rate equation, rate is equal to Ka. So combine this equation, you had Ka is equal to negative dA dt, which can be rearranged as negative K dt dA over dA over A. So integration of the equations will make ln A equals to negative kT plus C, as C is a constant which can be determined at the time T equals to zero. So uh, T equals to zero, this will give us the initial concentration uh, indicated by A0. So as a result, substitute the C into the A0, so we have ln A T is equal to negative kT plus ln A0. So this is the equation for the first order of reactions. So these are the first First, uh, these are a few graphs that relates the reactions. So this graph is derived from rate is equals to uh, K concentration of A. So if you plot the graph of rate against concentration, so you get a positive gradient and the gradient K here is a rate constant. You can also get a negative gradient graph if you use the expression just now where you have ln A is equals to uh, negative KT plus uh, ln A0. So um, this is the negative gradients given to it, where the negative gradient is equal to the rate, const uh, rate constant k. <coughs> so what is actually a half-life? A half-life is 
time taken for the concentration of a reactant to decrease of the in, uh, of its concentration by half. So flow chart below shows the decrease of concentration in each half-life take place. So let's say if you have the initial concentration as A0, after the first half-life, you have A0 over 2. Then second half-life will be further divided by 2, you get A0 over 4. Third half-life will further divide by 2, you get A over 8. So initial concentration, for example, initial if the initial concentration of reactant is 1.0, so after first half-life, you get 0 0.5, second half-life, you get 0 0.25, third half-life, you get 0 0.125, and so on. So when applied to a graph, so when we say that, for example, if, I will start, uh, if we start our concentration of 0 0.06, first half-life will be at 0 0.03, this is given at 24 minutes. Second half life is given at 0 0.015, so this will give it 48, and the third half life is 0 0.0075, this is given at 72. So since the first t half is equal to the second t half is equal to the first t half, so therefore we can conclude that this is the first order with respect to the concentration of A. Using the equation for the first order, we can also now calculate the half-life of the reaction and also rate constant if either information is given. Relying from the equation for the rest order, where we said after half-life, a t is equal to a0 over 2. So substituting the equation, we have a ln a0 over 2 is equal to negative kt half plus ln a0. So rearranging the equation, we become ln a0 minus ln a0 over 2 or ln a0 over a0 over 2. So if you can cancel, cancel, you get ln 2 equals to kt half. So t half is equals to 0 0.693 over k. So this is the equation for the first half-life of reactions. Second order reaction is whose the rate depends on the concentration of one reactant is raised to the second power or two, the concentration of two different reactants is raised to the first power. For example, if you have A plus B give product, a second, or, a second overall order of reactions can be obtained by either rate is equals to Ka square or rate is equals to Kb square or rate is equals to Ka times B. So let's take rate is equals to Ka as our examples. As we learned earlier, that rate can also be expressed as rate is equal to negative dt, or can also be written as rate is equal to k square. When the rate is thus substituted to each other, so k square is equal to negative dt, which can be rearranged as k dt is equal to negative da over a square. Integrations of negative da equals to a square, so we give one over a times k d plus c. So c is a constant which is determined at time t equals to zero. So usually it indicates uh, when c when t is equal to zero, c will be one over a. So since the concentration of the uh, since one over a naught is the initial concentration, therefore the second order of equation is one over a t is equal to k t plus one over a naught. So this is the graph of how rate against concentration a square looks like. So it is still a positive gradient. And this is how a graph of one over a against time looks like. So this one is derived as rate is equals to k a square, and this one is derived from one over a is equals to k t plus one over a naught. So this is how we get this graph in here. For a second order of reaction, the half life of the second order of reaction is slightly different from the first half life. So for a second half life, since everything is doubled, so the time taken will also be doubled. So for example, initial concentration is A0, so for the first half life, you have A0 over 2, so this will become the first T half. Then, further reactions will give a second half life, so this is the time taken for second half life. Then, further reactions will give a third half-life, so this is the time taken for third half-life. So as you can see here, the time range increased from 1 to 2 to 4, and if there is further, there will be 8. 
So graph above clearly shows that the half occur of a reaction's return for each case is doubled. So for the second order of reaction, since first t half is equal to one minute, second t half is two times the first t half equals to two minutes, third t half is equal to two times second t half equals to four minutes. So if you have fourth t half, so it will be two times the third t half, which is equal to eight minutes and so on. So that is all for the second order of reactions. And finally, for zero order of reaction, first and second order of reaction are most common reactions, so reaction whose order is zero are rare. For zero order of reaction, A give product, so rate is equal to is equal to rate is equal to K A naught. So substituting rate is equal to DA dt is equal to rate K. So you have K is equal to DA dt. So rearrange the equation, you have K negative KT equals to DA. So integration of the equation will give A is equal to negative KT. So for zero order of reaction, the equation is AT equals to negative KT plus A naught. So this is the graph of rate against concentration, where this is derived from rate is equal to K. So from here you can see that concentration of A does not influence the rate of reactions, where this is a graph of concentration against time. For uh, unlike first order and second order, for zero order of reactions, um, graph of concentrations against time is a negative gradient, whereas first order, second order is a curve. So that I have for you, all three order of reactions are introduced separately, so hope that you'll be able to understand and apply accordingly. So see you on the next video. Thank you. Thank you.